Have you had this problem? You've set up an FTP server which is sitting behind a router. The ports are forward, everything's looking good. FileZilla logs in, sets up a secure connection, and then when it comes to getting the directory listing, it fails. Frustrating, isn't it? Well, today I'm going to show you why that happens and a very easy way that you can get it working. So here's what happens. The FTP protocol is a little unusual in that it uses two connections. One, the main one, is a control connection for commands, and it sends data such as files and file listings on a separate channel called the data connection. And then in an ideal world, FileZilla would use the modern, the new EPSV command to say to the server, yo, give me a port to connect to for the data connection. And the server would reply, connect to port, say port 9000. And so FileZilla would connect to the server on port 9000 and everything would work. Uh, unfortunately, for reasons unknown, FileZilla will always use the old passive command over the IPv4 protocol, the old version 4 internet protocol. It'll do this even if the server says I support the NAT6 feature and EPSV. Then the passive command will return an IP address and a port number. And here's where things start going wrong. Because you see the server is behind a network address translation router. So it has a private IP address. So it thinks it's at, let's say, this private network. It has an IP address of 10.0.2.5. Okay, so it'll send back to FileZilla, connect to 10.0.2.5 port 9000. But FileZilla is on the other side of the router and it doesn't see the server at 10.0.2.5. It'll see it somewhere else. Uh, in fact, when I was testing this using a virtual machine, using QMU, uh, actually an, an emulated machine, the emulated machine was sitting at 10, at whatever IP address it was, and FileZilla was connecting to the local loopback, 127.0.0.1. And in some circumstances, FileZilla can say, okay, I know it's wrong, so I'll use the original IP address for the, the same address for the control connection. I'll ignore what the, the server said is wrong, and I'll use the, the original IP address, and everything will work fine. It uh, doesn't always work, especially when you're using something like loopback, or this is on a local network, uh, and it says, well, I don't know what to do, it's game over. Anyway, long story short, what happens is FileZilla might still try to use a non-existent IP address, and it'll fail. So how do you get it working? Well, there are a number of workarounds that are possible, but by far the easiest is to use a hidden feature that I spotted in the source code of FileZilla. So there's a, a small section that says, if you've set the passive reply fallback mode option to two, then FileZilla will always use the same IP address for the control connection as for the data connection, and magically you'll be able to access your server. Now I say hidden because you can't find this in the settings menu, FileZilla settings menu. So what you need to do is you need to find the FileZilla.xml config file. Uh, I'll leave info on my website on, on where you usually find those on your hard drive. Open up the uh, FileZilla.xml file, look for the passive reply fallback mode setting and set that to two. I'll make sure you've closed FileZilla while you do this or it'll overwrite it on exit and it'll be gone. So close FileZilla, then change FileZilla.xml's passive reply fallback mode to two, save it, and now you can start up FileZilla, connect to the server, and it'll just magically work. It's awesome. That's it for now. I'll see you next time.